This lecture corresponds to section 24.5, and it has to do with the forces that are the moving charges feel when they move inside of a magnetic field. This is a video is that shows when the magnetic um, field points this is to a the beam right, of uh, the uh, beam charges downward, moving from here. When all we the way switch to the, the end magnetic field of the two switch the direction and the um the beam there's going to be a magnet okay. that is going to be brought uh, close to the when beam the magnetic field and is the pointing beam straight will down, feel a force the beam bends to the left but it has to do that because we can get back to our original case by just rotating the magnetic field there's that's where we started from the beam bending downward finally when the magnetic field and the beam are parallel, there's no deflection. There's no magnetic force. The fundamental Well, as you can see, um, the force that moving charges feel when they move inside of a magnetic field are very complex. The, um, it has to do with the velocity, the, the direction of uh, motion of the charges. It has to do with the direction of the magnetic field. And in general terms, um, it can be it, the force will depend on the velocity, the charge that is moving, and the field. Here we have um, a plane in which there's a magnetic field along the plane in that direction as shown by the blue arrow, and we have a charge at rest. If the velocity is zero, then the force is going to be zero. There is no magnetic force on a charged particle at rest. So the the charge has to be moving in order to feel a force. However, if it, it is moving along the same direction as the magnetic field, then the force is going to be zero. Or if it's moving against the field, anti-parallel, the force is going to be zero. So somehow the force has to do with the angle between these two, the velocity, the direction of the velocity, and the magnitude of the magnetic field. In general terms, the force depends on the charge, the speed, the magnitude of the velocity, the magnetic field, and the angle between these two. The magnitude of such force can be calculated through this expression, where Q is the charge, V is the speed, B is the magnetic field in Tesla's, and then comes the angle, and you, we have to take the sine of the angle between the two. And uh, the direction of the force is uh, a bit complicated. You have to use your right hand pointing four fingers in the direction of the velocity, and then curling the fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. And in doing so, the thumb will give you the direction of the force. The, since we have uh, the, the force depends on the sine of the angle, we can see that if the angle is zero, sine of zero is zero, and the force is zero. In when when the when the angle is zero, that means that this velocity is going to be parallel to the field. So in the, in that case, as we just saw in the previous slide, the force is zero. If v the velocity goes all the way down so that this angle is 180, then the sine of 180 will give you zero and the force is going to be zero. So if the particle is moving in a way, in a manner anti-parallel to the field, the force is zero. And sine of zero, sine of alpha goes from zero all the way to one and all the way to zero and then to minus one. Well, the maximum value is going to be whenever this, the maximum value of the force is going to be, will happen whenever the sine equals one. And that happens 
when one is at 90 degrees with respect to the other one, when the speed is at 90 degrees with respect to the field, the force is greatest when the angle is 90 degrees. This is uh, my preferred way of finding the direction of the force. You have the velocity, the direction, you have the field in some other direction, and then you use your right hand in the following way. You put the four fingers in the direction of the velocity, and then bend them in the direction of the field. Bend them this way. You can see the fingers curl that way. And the thumb will give you the direction of the force. Look at the fact that the that uh, the fingers cannot bend in the other direction. So you, sometimes in order to bend them, you need to turn your hand around. Now, the book uses a different um, way of, of uh, determining the, fee, the direction of the force, and that is by using those three fingers. Using this for the velocity, this for the feel, and this for the force. I prefer the other method, but you can try um, using this one also. Some examples. For these examples, you're, you're going to have to look at it, think a little bit, use your right hand, and answer them. Well, in this case, we have a positive charge moving this way and the magnetic field moving that way. So if you place your four fingers in this direction and bend them in that direction, the thumb is going to be pointing in what direction? That's going to be the direction of the force. So pause, think, and answer. Well, the force is up. Next, how about this other case in which the velocity is this way and the feel is that way? You're going to have to turn your hand in a painful way. And then you're going to see that the force is going to be down. This is the same case as before as this one, except that now we're dealing with a negative charge. So you do exactly the same, but flip your answer at the end. Now, this is the first example that we saw. Actually, the second one, you have the velocity in the same direction of the field. So the angle between the two is zero. Sine of zero gives you zero, so there is no force. And so is this case in which the velocity is at 180 degrees with respect to the field. So the, again, the force is zero. Well, let us um, do a quick check. Here we have a positive charge that is moving up. And then we have a field produced by this permanent magnet. But the field at that point circles around and at this point is pointing to the left. So you're going to have to put four fingers up, bend them in left. The thumb will give you the answer. And of course, the answer is out of the screen. Here we have another case, and the, um, it is a, a, this represents a beam. So negative charges are passing through the, um, this opening in the magnet, and they are moving down. And you want to know uh, what, is, uh, what is the direction of the force on these charges to see in which direction the beam is going to be deflected. Well, in doing so, you're going to have to point four fingers down but then you have to bend those fingers in the direction of the field. What is the direction of the field? Well, fields come out of norths and get into souths. So the field is going to be pointing from north to south. So it's pointing to the right. If you use your four fingers pointing down and bend them this way, you're going to see that the force is going to be out. But then you have to flip it because it's a negative charge, so it's going to be into the plane, into the screen. Another case with a negative charge, you just point four fingers in this direction, bend them up, and you're going to have that. Uh, you're going to have a 
your thumb sticking out, but you flip it because it's a negative charge. So it's going to be into Well, that is uh, what we saw is the original force. If we, if a, a charge keeps staying inside of a region, then that force will be making changes, bending the direction continuously. So let us look at uh, this case in which we have a positive charge moving towards the right, and the field is given by this. Remember that excess means that the field is into the plane. So you, you use your four fingers here, bend them into the plane, and you're going to see that the thumb uh, points up. So this is the force that it feels at this point, when the charge is at that point. But force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration means change of velocity. So this velocity will have an acceleration upwards, which in turn will make the charge move like so, like following this blue arrow at that instant of time. In the next instant of time, you do it again, and you're going to see that now the direction is more vertical than before, and more bending, and keeps on bending. And it turns out that um, those charges moving in a uniform magnetic field will form a perfect loop, a circular motion. What we have is that um, this is central motion, and it is like holding uh, an object with a string and um, making it go around in a perfect circle. The, the string would feel a tension. In this case, we don't have a string, but we also have a tension, which is the force being exerted by the magnetic field. The force is inwards at all times, ma making the charge go around. The magnitude, of course, the magnitude that the charge feels is, be, is given by this. Now, we don't have a sign of the angle because it's at 90 degrees. The force, the, the field is always in, and the velocity is on the plane, so the angle between the two is 90 degrees, and that makes it a uh, sign of uh, 90, gives you one. So it's the force is simply that. But now, since this is moving around in a perfect circle, it can be taken, this force can be taken, as a centripetal force. So it's going to be equal to this, mv squared divided by r. So out of this, we can solve for the radius of our rotation. This radius here is going to be mv squared divided by qvb. The two, one of the v's goes away, and we end up with this. m is the mass of the particle in kilograms. q is the charge of the particle. v is the magnetic field. And V is the velocity, the speed, the magnitude of the velocity. Now, in case that we have um, motion that is not exactly at 90 degrees with respect to the field, then we can end up having a helix, a helical motion. In other words, we have the same circular motion, but on top of that, we have a displacement in one direction that will make it go into a, a helical path. Now, it turns out that this is exactly the same type of uh, motion that charges uh, have when they come from the sun and reach the Earth. The Earth has a magnetic field, so when the charges coming from the sun approach, they will form this type of motion, but in doing so, it turns out that they are being accelerated, and when a charge is accelerated, it will produce radiation. So since all of that gets concentrated near, near the poles, then near the poles, there's going to be a lot of those charges going around in circles and producing radiation. That radiation is visible and it is known as the Aurora Borealis. And I'm going to try to run a video to see, to show you. The video comes with, uh, the video comes from YouTube, and it comes with music, 
but uh, in making it, uh, inserting it into this PowerPoint presentation, I lose the sound. So let me just run it. This happened in 2014. And um, it is incredible to think that, that you can see something like this without uh, taking any type of drugs or smoking something. The different colors come from the different types of charges. Some charges correspond to oxygen, some charges are simply hydrogen and helium, nitrogen, and sometimes the, the like here we see the green under the red, sometimes we see a blue under the green, and this is a regular occurrence in the northern hemisphere. You need to go close to the polar circle I had the pleasure of seeing this once when I was uh, flying over uh, um, Greenland. I was on my way to Europe and somebody had a heart attack and the plane had to come back, but he, it, the plane couldn't take the usual route so they ended up going north and giving us a free a spectacle. The, the guide survived, by the way. We landed in St. John's Island in Canada. Well, another example, we have a beam of positively charged particles passing through the poles of a magnet. The force of the particle uh, on the particle is up the velocity of the particle is into the figure and the question is is this the north or is this the south and is this the south or is this the north etc okay so we have uh, uh the velocity so you have to point four fingers in the direction of the figure and then bend them somehow so that uh, the force is up and you realize that you have to bend them this way which means that the field is going to be moving from this to this which makes this a north and makes this a south. So the answer is north here, south here. In this case, we have a, a negative charge moving like this and we have a field that is going into the, the magnet. What is the direction of the magnetic force on the electron? Well, it's easy to, know, to see that it's zero because uh, the angle between the field and the velocity is going to be 180, and sine of 180 gives you zero. This is a bit more complex. We have um, a negative charge that is moving in this direction, and it feels a force that is out of the screen towards you. So the question is, which of these four directions for the field is responsible for that force coming out? Well, first of all, uh, the force is coming out, so we are going to have to test each of these four. The way I do it is uh, I put my four fingers here, and then I bend them in this direction. So if I bend them in that direction, I, I will get a force that is... pointing out. So it would be pointing out, but this is negative. Uh, so it would be pointing in. So this is not the answer. And this one would be aligned with this one, so the force is zero. This one would be, um, this would be the correct answer, I think. Yeah. The third one is the correct answer. You have a uh, your four fingers in this direction, and then you bend them in this direction, and you, you see that there's gonna, your thumb is going to be pointing in, but being negative, you have to flip it, and this points out as the force. Here we have um, 
uh, magnetic field. We have we need a magnetic field here that will make this thing go straight. Well, turns out that um, we have a negative charge, and when it gets into this region, there's going to be a field of force, and the force is going to be repulsive from this and attracted to that. So this one, because of the electric force, is going to be moving up. There's going to be an electric force up. Consequently, we need a, um, um, a magnetic force that points down. And if the force is down, what is the direction of the field that would produce a force down on a negative charge? So we have to uh, discard this one right away. And uh, we need the force down. So it doesn't, it, it's not this one, it's not that one. All of these are in the same plane. It has to be a, a perpendicular. So it has, it's going to have to be one of these two. And the answer is... You can test the answer by pointing your four fingers in the direction of the velocity and then bending them into the page. This one, this field is into the page and you're going to see that the, it shows a force up, but being a negative charge, you flip it and it's going to be the magnetic force is going to be down. Here we have um, a positive charge moving toward in the direction of a, a wire. This a thick wire and um, the current is coming is going into the screen so consequently if you use your right hand and point the, f the thumb in the direction of the wire of the current you're going to see that it produces a field that circles around in a clockwise direction so at this point the field is up so we're going to have the velocity to the right the field up Consequently, there's going to be a force that is going to be um, directed. Uh, let me let me this uh, out of the screen. Yes, you you have four fingers in this direction, and then you bend them up. The thumb is going to be sticking out, and this is a positive charge. So that's the correct answer. Now, a cyclotron is a device that accelerates particles, and it is uh, it uses a magnetic field to do that, as well as an electric field. And um, it is it, they say here that it is used for PET. PET is positron emission tomography. The positrons are the antiparticles of the electrons. They are positive electrons. They don't exist in our universe, but we can create them, and they will be with us for just a, a brief moment until they find another electron and they, they annihilate one another and produce a flash of radiation. Well, this is the way it operates. These are these two chambers. Uh, it is like, a, 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 this is empty inside, this is a, a case outside. And uh, you put particle, charge, charge particles there, and then you have this side and charged with, uh, say, positive charges, and this side charged with negative charges, in such a way that there is a field from, in the gap, there is a field from this side to this side that would accelerate the particle uh, in this direction. Well, as soon as it comes in into this, the so-called D, these are known as the Ds, there's a magnetic field that is pointing up. So the particle comes in, feels a force that is pointing up, and it will turn around, and then it will get into, will cross the gap again, will get into the, the left D, and the, by, by then the, the field will make it go around this way, and then it will go through the gap again, increasing its speed, and then turning again, increasing the speed, turning again, increasing the speed, and so on. So at the very end, it will uh, have uh, the largest radius that uh, it is possible to have, and that radius is given by this, and this is the, the magnetic field, mass, the velocity, and the charge. Now the velocity uh, is going to be the maximum speed that it gets 
by having a kick every time that it goes into the, through the gap. This is an actual picture of the one of the Texas A&M cyclotron. And uh, in, 2000, um, in 2017, this device uh, celebrated the 50th year of the, cyclo of the institute. The um, cyclotron is a newer model. They made some uh, improvements. I worked at this place for uh, three years when I was in graduate school. And this is a question related to that. You have a proton that uh, com is coming out of the cyclotron with a uh, uh, kinetic energy of 11 millions of electron volts. And um, it does that through a cyclotron that uses a magnetic field 1.2 Teslas, which is a huge field. And the question is, what is the radius of the, of the proton's orbit before they come out of the cyclotron. Well, we have um, a way of calculating the radius. And for this, we need to know the mass, which we know because of proton. We know the charge, we know. We know the field, but we need the velocity. Now, we do not have the velocity. We, we know what is the, the, the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy uh, is 1 half mv squared, so we, need, we can get the velocity from there, except that we need it in meters per second, so we need to turn this electron volts into joules. So 11 million electron volts into joules first is, uh, this is the, your 11 millions, and then you multiply times this number, and this will take you from uh, electron volts to joules, and it turns out that the kinetic energy equals that. And that equals one half mv squared. So from there you solve for v, the speed, and you get the, the speed is this. And once that you have the velocity, then you can just plug it in there and get the radius. So it is the mass, the charge of the proton, the magnetic field, the velocity that we just calculated here. And it turns out that the radius is uh, 40 centimeters, not much. This uh, phenomenon is also used, uh, the, I mean, the forces felt by, by electric charges moving inside of a magnetic field is used to uh, determine the flow of, uh, of blood in a, an artery. So we have uh, the so-called flow meter. And the way that it operates is that we have all the stuff, all the different types of charges fl floating inside of our, our bloodstream. And as they pass by a, an external magnet, they will feel a force. And of course, positive charges will go one way and negative charges will go in the other way. And by doing that, we separate them. And if we check the voltage across, the voltage is going to be proportional to the amount of charges. And that will give you an idea of how many charges and consequently what is the the force which is proportional to the velocity so we can extract the the speed of flow of those electric charges this is a, a representation that if we have the velocity of those charges is out of the page if the blood is coming our way outside of the page and uh, we have the magnets like this, then the, the magnetic field is going to be pointing down. So that means if we have four fingers sticking out of the screen, and then we bend them uh, down, we're going to see that the positive charges have feel of force this way, negative charges feel of force that way. And this creates a difference in voltage between these two ends that can be measured. By knowing this, we can get an estimate of the amount of charges, and by knowing that, we can estimate the, the flow. And that's it for uh, this section. I'm assigning, uh, say, one, two, three, four problems here, and two more in the next uh, slide. And that's it for the section. 
um, 5. Next, we're going to see the same thing, but now for uh, forces on currents, not on singly moving charges, but uh, currents.